This week on Chef on a Mission, I head to magnificent Bendigo Station in the South Island High Country, home to legendary Woolly Merino Shrek. I join a hard-working shearing gang, tackle a feisty Merino ram, and, me a big and try to cook them a feast to remember. Seven years ago, Bendigo became famous around the globe for a certain woolly hermit. I was lucky enough to visit the world's most famous sheep, Shrek, in the last few months of his life. It's the majestic Merino that brings me here today. We'll be mustering 1,200 sheep and meeting up with a shearing gang for crunching. And guess who's on that gang? I'll be seeing what they do how they eat, and hopefully I'll be bringing 5% magic to their table. I love this part of the country. I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be awesome. Down, Down by the wool shed, the shepherds are rounding up the last of the flock. First job, we've got a thousand ewes to get in, and they're going to get a crutching. First day on a farm ever for me. There's no getting out now. It's going to be awesome, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> hey, it. Hey, it. It's all on for the young and old in here. Inside the wool shed, the shearing gang is in full swing. These guys and girls can shear hundreds of sheep a day. It's a hugely physical job. You've got to be super fit, but I'm going to give it a go. Fortunately, I've got a gun shearer to show me the ropes. So what are you doing here today? A uh, bit of crutching and eye wigging. What's eye wigging? Clip around the top notch and around the face, just so the sheep can see better. And the crutching is for. So they don't create dags. So it's like a Brazilian. Pretty much, yeah. All right. But it's not all fun and games. Some of these merinos are scary. Oh, no, that's got an attitude. No, no, this one. No, it's all right. She's all yours. I'm incredibly nervous right now, I tell you, that's for sure. Look after me on this. All right, mate. All right, mate. So, I'm going to grab it. Marky's easing me in gently with a placid you. But even so, I'm right out of my comfort zone. Hey. <laughs> Come on, mate, lift him up. <laughs> OK, buddy. I tell you what, I'm so pleased Marky's here to tell me exactly what to do. Right on there, mate. A lot of things could go wrong. The sheep could just boot the, boot the hell out of him, or um, he'd have a lock-up, cut himself, or he'd just trip over and do anything, really. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. No, you go anywhere. The bastard's trying to get away. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm boss now. All right, give it its Brazilian. <laughs> Bit of a half pie job there. Out of ten, maybe a five. Five out of ten, okay. Okay, mate, down the hatch. Come on. He's had enough. Come on, down you go. I can promise you that is not as easy as it looks. I think I kind of did okay on the head. The bottom, well, that needs a little bit more work. But I tell you what, I can really see how these guys work up an appetite. In fact, it's lunchtime right now. And I'm keen to find out exactly what these shearers eat. Time for lunch, Marky. Yeah, mate, here, get this down here. 
Alrighty, so this is what you have for lunch, eh? Oh, you got to keep the energy up. Banana, that's healthy. Yep. Ham and cheese tomato sandwich, that sounds very good. Chips, healthy? Not really. Biscuits. Bacon and egg pie, beauty. Famous mutton pie and a banger. Eating in the sharing mm. industry is quite just grab and go. We eat a lot on the go. I oh, hear you boys eat a lot of pies. Love the pies. The girls like the pies too? Oh, they love them. <laughs> hey, Cara. Yeah. Cara, like you're a female sharer. It's pretty unusual, right? Well, there's a few out there. Do you eat as much as the boys? Yeah. What's your favourite lunch? Steak and eggs or a Jimmy's pie. Awesome. <laughs> In a couple of nights, I'm going to cook you guys dinner. I'm going to try and bring a bit of 5% magic to the table, give you a really good restaurant-style meal. Are you guys up for giving that a try if I put a few things on there that might be just a bit different? Yeah. As long as it's going to taste nice. I'm keen to learn more. Hi, Simon. Nice so I go in search of a pair of experts who are cooking the sharers' dinner tonight. You too. I'll tell you what, this is a bit more my speed in here. Much better than that cheap shit. Yeah. <laughs> How long have you been cooking for sheep sharers? Oh, well, I've grown up doing it um, on the farm, just helping out Mum. Hey, what are you cooking for them tonight? They're getting glazed carrots, smashed potato. Mm. We've got some Indigo Marino lamb and shepherd's pie, macaroni cheese, because carbo, carbo, <sighs> carbo. Keep them going. So the carbo, carbo, doesn't that give them carburitis? They love it. They love it. Mind you, don't see too many fat shearers out there, do you? So I think they burn through it, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're busy working all day. They need a good feed at the end of the day. Hey, look, I'm so looking forward to dinner. It sounds fantastic. But first, I've got to go and have a go at clutching this ram. If you don't see me back, I didn't make it. OK. Well, see you soon. See you soon. Going to need that. <laughs> back at the wool shed, the gang's moved on to the heavyweights. It's time for my second attempt, and there's a big, ugly ram with my name on it. Done the use. We're on to the big boys now, so got to get in there. All right, let's give it a whirl. This is going to be good. <laughs> when you grab the merino rams, you've got to watch out for the horns, and it will buck and pull you and put its horn into your leg, your groin. Oh, he just attacked me in the leg. He just came up and gave me a big headbutt. Ram one, Simon zero. <laughs> Come on, mate, flip them over. The ram's twice the size of the ewe. <laughs> they're hard to pull out, they're hard to tip over. I'll help you. They're this hard in general. They're heavy, eh? Flip them over. So across, top notch there. All right, now onto the puzzle. I lift it up a bit. Oh, 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 oh. Give me long hours over a hot stove any day. This is the hardest physical work I've done in ages. And this is just one ram. Oh, dear, little. Oh. Come on, mate, push him. Yeah. How did I go? I oh, did pretty good. Simon, out of 10, I'd give you five. I'm happy with five out of ten to get out of here alive, I tell you. <laughs> I thought Simon was, yeah, he had a lot of mana in pulling out a ram and, and to crutch a ram, it takes a lot of effort. He, he did a good job on it, I reckon, for the first time anyway. Well, that's the last sheep of the day. My back stuffed and I've got full respect for how hard these guys work. Incredible. But we're about to have some mighty fine southern cooking right here in the wool shed and I can't wait. Over in the kitchen, Bridget and Sarah are putting the finishing touches to a classic country dinner. Nothing like a good Central Otago Shearer's meal. Yum. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I think I need to bring a plate. Good hearty food, heavy on the carbs, including shepherd's pie, macaroni cheese, mashed potato, and lashings of white bread. Looking forward to these local carrots. Oh, I reckon that looks pretty damn good to me. It's what you call an awesome dinner. All the flavours are beautiful, everything's perfectly cooked. The Bendigo mutton is incredible, the shepherd's pie is awesome, and uh, it's pretty hard to beat this macaroni cheese, it's wicked. 
Rating out of 10, what would you give it? Uh, at least an 8. 8? Yeah, I'd say an 8 too. Maybe an 8? I reckon a 9. I love everything on my plate. It'll be gone by the time I finish. <laughs> but wait, there's more! Oh, that was pretty good. A stunning ginger pudding with poached central Otago pears. This is as good as my butterscotch pudding at Euro. It's awesome. I, I tell you what, everybody absolutely loved your food tonight. They're all raving about it. Oh, here's oh, to us. Yeah, here's to you guys. But hey, I might need you guys' help tomorrow to go shopping, see what produce we can find. Yeah, we can do that, yeah. can't we? Awesome. Yeah. Well, I'm knackered, so I'm going to slope off to bed. But hey, thank you so much for an awesome night. You're welcome, and we're awesome. looking forward to your meal. You'll cool. see you tomorrow. Bell's on. <laughs> I'm planning on an early night, but you know what they say about best laid plans. G'day. Hey. How are you? Good, thank you. I'm just about to go to bed. You're not going to bed, you're coming rabbit shooting. Right, yeah? Sounds good to me. Let's go. So how long do you think it'll take us to find rabbits up there? About 100 yards. There's one, right there. Jeepers, it goes fast. I came to Central Otago looking for adventure. One down. And it doesn't get any better than this, hunting down some wild tucker. Rabbits are a real pest in this area, and they're even giving me some ideas for my menu. Right there. That'll do. There we go. One down, another million to go. Day two at Bendigo. And before I head off in search of local produce, I'm meeting its most famous resident. And here he is, a renegade who dropped out, hung out in a cave, grew his hair long and became a folk hero. And his name is Shrek. He's possibly New Zealand's oldest sheep at 16 years old. That's like 90 years old for humans. But seven years ago, he became our biggest celebrity for his massive fleece growing over six years of freedom. And with me is the first man to tackle Shrek's flowing locks, world champion blade shearer, Peter Cassidy. G'day. How are you? What was the feeling like when you actually had to share this good looking animal? I was overwhelmed at the time. It was a big job. How much wool did you get off him? 27 kilos. And this guy is now world famous. He's raised hundreds of thousands of dollars for Cure Kids. He gets fussed over and a lot of loving, clearly, from anybody that meets him. He's given so much joy to a lot of people, and it's just absolutely marvellous. But if you thought Shrek was one of a kind, think again. What the hell have we got here? Well, it looks like Shrek's sister. It's only got about four fleeces on it, so it's a double, double fleecer. This is what we call a woolly. He's probably got three or four years wool on him. Well, we're not too proud to find these things every day, Simon, but um, it was found very similar country to where Shrek was. We don't want another Shrek. Um, he's been a great journey, and there'll only be one of them, so we'll have to share it, you and me. Well, I'm happy to let the expert kick things off. How many woolen jumpers do you reckon are in here, Peter? I would say probably about 40. This would probably weigh 20 kilos. Boy, I think you should have a go there, Simon. All right. Throw on the rest there, and away you go. You know, keep the top blade on the skin so you won't cut him. Don't pull the wool. Don't pull the wool. No. I told Paul Holmes that. After yesterday's attempt at shearing, this is a definite change of pace. I don't want to hurt the girl, and I'm terrified of nicking her skin, so I'm sort of taking my time. Very good, Simon. You might make a shearer after all. Yeah, well, how good does that feel? There's clearly a weight off her shoulders. Shrek sister is more like a frisky spring lamb. That's Pete's been breed. shearing for over 30 years, so he's a good man to ask about what I should be feeding the gang. And at the end of the day, what do you have to eat? Uh, it was always a roast and plenty of vegetables, and we always got pudding. As Napoleon said, an army marches on its stomach. So you've got to give them a big bit of protein, a heap of carbs. You're onto it. Good, honest, plain food, and plenty of it. I'm going to bring a restaurant dish to them. How's it going to go down? All right. Cheryl's will love it, you know, asparagus, hollandaise sauce, all your flash tucker. We'll eat it, as long as it's not too spicy. Yeah. Stay away from the spicy. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure you'll knock up something for them. 
Yeah, yeah fill them up. And right now, I want to fill up my boot with local produce. I really want to surpass the Sharon Gans expectations with a fantastic dinner that's got that little bit of 5% magic that I'm looking for. First stop's Cromwell, where I'm catching up with Bridget. We cooked that fantastic dinner last night, and she's apparently got some Mac Daddy venison. Morning, Bridget. Morning, Simon. Gee, what a great butcher where you can see all this on display. I mean, I judged a butcher in Auckland a few years ago as the best butcher in Auckland, and this butcher would clean up. We want to surpass the expectations of all these sheriffs tomorrow and give them something that they don't normally have. And when I was talking to them, very few of them had ever eaten rabbit. Shot some rabbit last night, so if I get a few more, I'll have enough to do it as an entree for them. Brilliant. What do you reckon about venison as a main for these guys tomorrow night? I reckon it'll kick, it'll go off. If I cook that on the barbecue... It'll be stunning. I've got my meat, now for my veg. I'm visiting Dave White at Goodies from the Gorge. I'm on a mission to find the best spud in central Otago. Apparently they've got a bunch of varieties organically grown, so maybe I'll find the best spud in New Zealand. I'm hoping to find some other goodies as well. Oh, check it out. So there we are. These are a real gourmet style potato. Amazing shape. Aren't they fantastic? They're waxy and they stay firm and they're just beautiful straight out the ground. I'm going to blow them away with these potatoes. <laughs> it doesn't take long to get a bucket full of gourmet spuds, but Dave also tells me he's got a fantastic fig tree. Wow, check these out. Look at that. Awesome. Mm. That is an awesome fig, and if I grill that on the barbecue and serve it with venison, I think it'll be sensational. It's a good start, but if I'm going to feed a gang of hungry sharers, I've still got a long way to go. I'm now on my way out past Bendigo to the little town of Taras, and I'm heading for the general store. Here I am, downtown Taras. This is what New Zealand is all about. Hi. Hey, Sarah, not only are you a cook for the shearers, th this is your store, right? How you yeah, doing? Yeah, good to see you. I love places like this, so come with me, we're going to have a look around. Quince. I've never cooked quince before. I think I'll do a quince and feed you a crumble. Now, these guys love carbs, so most people are like parsnips or a bit passe, but if I make a wicked puree out of this, I might win some sheep shearers. What have we got here? Honey, that'll be really good in my crumble. Olive oil, this is my secret weapon. This is what's going to richen up my tomato sauce with a rabbit. I've heard about these Jimmy's pies, so I'm grabbing one right in my pocket right now for lunch. But now I've got some Pinot Gris vanilla lemon balm syrup from Central Otago that I'm going to put in my quinces when I'm poaching the quinces. So I'm bagging up a bottle of that. Simon, come and try some local ice cream. Why not? This one here is called Hawea Honey. It's absolutely beautiful. Go well with your crumble. Can I have a taste? Sure. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I need a cone, I need a cone. It's not a girl's taste. Wrap your laughing mitts around that one. Now that's what I call a taste. I need a couple of tubs of that honey ice cream, Sarah. Thank you so much. I could do with some fresh herbs, and I've been given a tip off about an amazing garden just down the road. Can you believe it? I found the hugest herb garden right next to Bendigo. It's all here for me to raid, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I've spied the rosemary, and that's gonna be the hero in my rabbit dish. Oh, smells so good. I can't wait to see Ray McVinney's face when he watches me use this on top of the meal. <laughs> I need something for the spuds. And here we've got some thyme. Just over here, there's some marjoram. And that will go well with it as well. There's an abundance of sage here, so I'm going to grab some while I'm here. There's some mint over there. I'm going to grab some of that as well. So when I hit the kitchen tomorrow, 
feet running, I'm going to be able to make the ultimate butter to go with my great spuds. I know sharers like their beer, but we're in one of New Zealand's great wine regions. So I'm hoping to match some local wines to my three-course dinner. The rabbit is an entree. This is an 07 vintage. And there's a certain femininity involved, but still with some beautiful structure behind it. And I think this goes well with the rabbit. And then I'm going to lead on to a venison dish, which I'm going to do a parsnip puree. With the venison, I would like to recommend a slightly older vintage of Pinot Noir, but also coming in a bigger format, like a Magnum. I really think that great dishes have to come with a great bottle. Wow, so doesn't that look fantastic? And I think it will work extremely well. For dessert, I'm doing a Fiji and quince crumble yeah. with a yeah. honey ice cream. I actually think I thought it would be a really nice touch to have a vintage um, sparkling wine from Bendigo Station on Quartz Reef. That's an 06. It got really strong and dry acidity, so it really cuts in quite nicely and supports the freshness of your dessert. Done. We've got to try some. Let's That's have a right. taste. Come on. Thanks. Cheers, Rudy. See ya. Man, I'd love to s stand here and drink Pinot with you all afternoon, but I've got a big dinner to get organised, so I'm out of here. Thank you very much. No worries. Thanking you as well. I'm taking the glass, though. See yeah. you later. Yeah, no worries. Good luck. Well, I think I've got it nailed. I've got the best wines of the area, Bendigo. I've got the best produce that can be sourced in the area. I've got two great cooks to help me on the day. I just better stop drinking this, otherwise I won't be getting anything done. Cheers. I finally got into the kitchen, which I'm really excited about. And the reason I'm in the kitchen the night before is because I'm making a rabbit ragu, and just like a curry or a casserole, it always tastes better when it's made the day before. This recipe is an oldie bit of goodie. I lived in Italy for a year, and this mother of nine children in Tuscany showed me how to do this recipe. It was one of those dishes that just got everybody going. I was surprised that a lot of the sharers had never actually tried rabbit before, but what I do know is that they love tomato sauce on everything, and if I actually do a tomato-based sauce, I think I'm going to be in there with a winner. You can already see that this is going to be packed full of flavour. All my rabbits ready to go. All I want is the legs. Almost like the chicken nibble of rabbit. We'll get these in and start searing them off. I'm bringing a little taste of rural Italy to rural central Otago. And hopefully it's going to set their palates alight. In they go. I'll tell you what, I'm feeling really good. I've got the entree on and we're just going to let that tick away until the rabbit's just starting to fall off the bone. Then we're going to turn it off and by tomorrow evening that is going to taste absolutely delicious. I've had a fantastic day sourcing all my product locally, but Marky only gave me 5 out of 10 for my shearing, so I'm going to be totally on my game tomorrow. This is it, my big day. I'm going to be cooking the shearers a three-course menu. I've bought along my box of tricks. I've sourced all the ingredients locally. It's a big ask, but I'm going to give those dishes that 5% magic. While I'm starting work in the kitchen, the gang's back on the job in the wool shed. The shearers are used to a certain style of food. I want them to forget about their pies, their toasted sandwiches. We're using everything from the land from around the area, like the rabbit. And it is smelling absolutely delicious. It's perfectly cooked. It's just falling off the bone like that. I'm loving it already. Morning, Simon. We're reporting for duty. Oh, boy, am I pleased to see you too. How, How are you doing? doing? Good, good. So where do we start? Peel some parsnips, and I'll need three kilos. Yep. You're going to make a berry gel. One and a half kilos of berries, 750 grams of sugar, 750 grams of water. All right. Great. Thank you. Simon, what's on the menu tonight? We've got a rabbit ragu. Then we've got venison with a parsnip puree. Mm -hmm. We've got beautiful potatoes that we got from goodies from the gorge. Yep. That's going to be in herb butter. 
And then we're going on to dessert, which is going to be a quince and Fiji crumble with the Manuka honey ice cream from... Monica. From Monica ice cream. That we got from the store yesterday. It's gorgeous. Oh, that sounds so yummy, Simon. I think it's quite flash for the old sharers, <laughs> but, you know, they need a bit of culture. <laughs> So that's come to the boil, Sarah, so I'll grab out of my box of tricks. Oh, wow, here's all your secrets. Oh, I've been having a look at this. This is all the toys. So I've got, you know, I carry with me all the look bits and pieces that I might just need, you know, little balsamics and things that I really like to use. That's your chef's hat. <laughs> I've got From a bigger head than that girl, I tell you. Uh -huh. So this is a super bag. So what we'll actually do is we'll strain the berries through this. What's this? What's oh, gold dust? Look at the gold dust, it's brilliant. <laughs> what is gold dust, Simon? Well, I've got these little secret things that just add that little 5% magic to a dish. For instance, this is um, Dilmar cinnamon tea with orange that's been dehydrated, a whole bunch of peppers, and I'm going to put that... Smell it? Yeah, I'm going to put that on the venison. Oh, yeah. Simon's box of tricks is pretty cool. You know, I've had a wee, I've had a wee poke around in there behind his back, and he's got some great stuff in there. You know, I'm going to take some of that stuff away with me and put it in my wee box of tricks. If we can stay on track, we'll be okay time-wise, but we can't afford to make any mistakes. And uh, you know, we've got guests coming, and we're going to be ready to serve food. I'm planning to give the sharers a balanced meal with heaps of proteins, veggies, and carbs. I just hope they like it more than what they normally eat. Sometimes when we're working too hard out, you don't feel like you can eat anything. But when you get home, oh yeah, you want a big, nice dinner. So we've got those almonds in the oven, mm -hmm. and we're going to roast the oats as well with the honey. Great. It's beautiful honey too, Simon. Mm. Oh, that's good, huh? And for that extra 5%, I'm adding a handful of mint. And mint gives it lots of colour, doesn't it? Mm. There's the honey coming through. Mmm, that's beautiful. And the mint, it's lifted. It. The mint sets it off. I'm happy with that. Mm -hmm. Let's set that aside. Have you ever peeled rabbit kidneys? I want to do the rabbit kidneys because they're like button mushrooms when you eat them, and most people go, kidneys, I'm not going to eat them. But rabbit kidneys are, without a doubt, the greatest kidney in the world, I think. And I'm just going to skewer this guy. And literally, you'll be able to go... Like a wee kidney lollipop. Yeah. Wow. Kidney lollipops, that's exactly right. Over in the wool shed, the sharers are getting through their work. In less than two hours, they'll be ready to eat. We've got the venison prepped. And what we're going to do is we're going to cover all of these with this. And then we're going to cook them on the barbecue until they're medium rare. Actually, have, you, have we got any chocolate? Chocolate? Actually, I've been hiding this right. from you because I didn't want you to get stuck into it before. Bendigo chocolate. I'm thinking if we melt that. You think these sharers are going to think you've gone completely nuts when you serve them chocolate and venison? Most people would think chocolate doesn't work with venison. I think it will. And when I put, you know, this in here, which is peppers, dehydrated orange peel, all those flavours are going to work with the venison. Right. Just... You say so. Chocolate's melted, so we're going to start getting some of the malto, which is a cornstarch molecule that comes from tapioca. We're waiting for something to blow up. Nothing's going to blow up here, except your taste buds when you try it. Taste it. That's chocolatey. Very chocolatey. And pepper. Can you taste all those flavours working with the venison? The orange, the peppers. Okay, you haven't gone completely nuts. Have, I, have I convinced you or you're not? You're, mm. I'm convinced. Yeah, you're convinced? Yep. There'll be a few funny reactions to the chocolate crumb from the shearers, but um, I think they're, they're pretty game. Two hours to go and I'm feeling like we're quite a long way behind now. Just suddenly you sort of think of all the things that need to be done. I feel like uh, a naughty on master chef who hasn't got a clue what they're doing right about now. We have to catch up, we have to get it done, and it will happen. It's just a bit messy at the moment, that's all. <laughs> Come on, I'll show you the plates really quickly, guys. I'm going to use a big plate like this for the venison. 
I'm going to use this beautiful pasta type bowl to serve the rabbit in. After we're going to cook the crumble in these, we're going to put the crumble on, put that on there. We're going to put the gel down here. We're going to put the crumb here and the ice cream on there. Yeah. It'll look pretty sexy. And we've got to get all the crumbles in here, all the mix in here. We've got to top them. We've got to get them on trays ready for in the oven. Cool, but they look good. They're piled up. They look like they're going to fill somebody up. 40 crumbles, done. Freeze-dried raspberries. I'm making a raspberry fizzy crumb to go on the crumble plate. But I've stuffed up. My crumb is burnt and stuck to the bottom of the pan. You want this one? Yeah, I'll, I'll try it. I'll see if the non-stick will work better. There's just so much to do, I can't afford to make silly mistakes. In the next hour, I've got to get the bread done. I've got to think about heating up the rabbit. We've got to cook venison. Uh, the list is too long to even think about what we've got to do. There's a lot to do. And with only three of us, we're going to be up against it. 60 minutes to go, Simon. Oh, Can I come well, and give you a hand? Oh, aren't you nice? <laughs> How are you? What a I'm nice fine. surprise. Thank you. I can't believe it. It's Sue Drummond from Series 1 of MasterChef. She lives just up the road and she's here to give me a hand. Oh, nice to see you. OK, so what do I want you to do? We've got some rabbit that I've got cooked. Wow. And I need the um, the sauce that we've reduced for the rabbit. Yeah. Easy as that. Simon's rabbit dish looks divine. It looks so lovely. Just a bit different. You know, it's just seeing a chef in action. And I know that stress, but I don't know it like he will know it. We went cooking for a big crowd when we were on the show. But this is so much fun. Nice to see Sue, top six of MasterChef. It's great to have her here. Keep going, we're making the crumpet bread and I don't have enough st space on top of the stove to cook them in pans as I normally do. So I'm gonna try cooking them in the oven. So I'm hoping that's gonna work. I've never done that before. Over at the wool shed, the shearers have finished their run and they're expecting big things from me. Uh, he may be not a good shearer, but um, I heard he's a pretty good cook. And I'm looking forward to um, seeing what he has to offer. The shearers are going to be wrapping up on the farm and they're going to be coming my way and they're going to be hungry. These have been on for 30 minutes and we haven't even got them boiling yet. So that's going to put me way behind time. What is with this gas? I mean, we're never going to have potatoes at this rate. We've got to hurry up and wait for the gas to boil. <laughs> Just when I've run out of steam in the kitchen, my 40 guests ride into town. And I'm nowhere near ready. I've been looking forward to it all day. I've had a big day today. I'm pretty hungry. I could eat a few horses, you know. <laughs> God, look at all these shares bought. It's like the whole town's out there. Simon, that's what happens when you put a do on in Terrace. Everyone turns up. <laughs> it kind of looks like everybody's turned up. I hope I've got enough food. Well, I just about starved myself today, so, so I could eat a bit tonight. Yeah, been looking forward to this night. I'm quite hungry too. <laughs> this is good old fashioned Barbie. This is where I'd rather be cooking all the time. The venison's for my main course, but I'm getting it on the barbecue early so that it's got plenty of time to rest before serving. The guests are seating now, Simon. Excellent. That's what we want to hear. Rabbit's going to be hot. That rabbit sounds real interesting. Yeah, can't wait to try that. I'll probably have a taste of that venison as well, because that chocolate. Yeah. I'm looking forward to trying everything tonight. Seems a bit bizarre to me to actually serve venison with chocolate, but no doubt Simon knows what he's doing. Just when I think everything's under control, along comes my worst nightmare. My gourmet spuds have exploded in the pot. It's amazing how these are quite hard, but they've really fallen apart, isn't it? Yeah. It's like they, they reach a point and then bang. It was like, you know, they took forever and they just came to the boil and then all fell apart. Where are the potato experts when you need them? Oh no, poor son, love pressure. At Bendigo Station, the old homestead has been transformed into a fine dining restaurant. And my 40 guests are ready and waiting. 
But over in the kitchen, all hell is broken loose. With just a bit too long on the heat, my spuds have fallen apart. You're always going to face things that are going to go wrong in the kitchen. And as we are today, you know, with these potatoes, I expect to have beautiful round potatoes. But you've just got to adapt. Happens all the time. It was like, you know, they took forever and they just came to the boil and then all fell apart. We can solve that though. We can, I can turn that into a, a mash because I've got this fantastic butter that I've made with all the herbs from next door. So if we get that and then we'll give it a good mash up, I reckon it'll be absolutely pretty awesome. Now we'll have a medley of potatoes with a garlic herb butter. That's what it says on the menu. That's what they'll be getting. Okay, wrap it out. If you grab the top tray first, and I just want to put just a little bit of the wild rice at the bottom here. We've got the rabbit going on top. Sue, get in there, start wiping plates, please. This is a good, hearty starter to get them going. As the kidneys go on, Sarah, we're away. How you going, guys? All right? Awesome. Hey, I'll tell you what you got here to start off with. And I've got some rabbits, and we've put the rabbit with the uh, olives rosemary and garlic and tomato, really long and slow so it should just all fall off the bone. And on top you've got a rabbit kidney and the idea is that you pick it up off the rosemary skewer and give it a whirl and it'll taste like a mushroom, trust me, okay? Buon appetito, mate. Mm. <laughs> it reminds me of eating a mushroom. Same sort of texture, but you can still taste the kidney in it. Some of that wine. <laughs> Great to see a rabbit on a plate, because really they're little buggers, and if you can turn um, a pest into a product, that's great, and Simon's done a good job with this. Well, the feeling's good, and I'll tell you what, those shearers have got some good-looking girls with them. OK, next table is a ten. Let's spread ten plates. It's awesome. Nah, it's real nice. The sauce is really nice with the bread. <laughs> Kidneys were a surprise. He said it tasted like a mushroom, not like a mushroom. Lovely wee entree, really. So, yeah, I think I might um, kill a few more rabbits around here and feed the family with them, yeah. <laughs> scrape, scrape. And loop. Next bowl. Here come the first mains. I hope the locals like my twist on barbecued venison. A dash of chocolate crumb. There's a meat glaze using some Bendigo Pinot Noir. OK, we can start going, please. Against the odds, we've got the first mains out bang on time. And my smash spud's going down a treat. Uh, you're not too bad, eh? Yeah. It's different. It's real unexpected. It's special to have the chocolate in it. It's nice and tasty. Oh, the venison is oh, it's really nice here. Nice and pink and red in the middle, the way we like it. That's good. The guests seem happy, but back in the kitchen, I've still got 30 plates to get out. OK, so I'll start down here. You, you're away. So I just can't afford to make any silly mistakes with the plating. Oh, no, that's, that's fine. And just stack it up like that. We need two more. Two more? Two more. You're doing good, guys. We're nearly there. Come on. These are the last plates. But there seems to have been a problem with the head count, and some of the guests are going hungry. We've got some food coming for you right now. Let me go and see where it is. A joke. How to look like the biggest in the world. I mean, there's no food there. I'm going to be going into the dining room to check it, that we've actually got mains. OK, guys, this is ready. Beautiful, thank you. Crisis averted. We've got just enough mains to feed the whole room. This is absolutely gorgeous. It's beautifully cooked. It'd have to be the best venison I've ever tasted, frankly. Unbelievable. No, I'd give this bloody ten, half out of ten, frankly. Yeah, it's great. And the intensity of the meat is just an extraordinary, beautiful match. It is absolutely stunning texture quality. That is just awesome. Oh, they smear things a bit fancy, eh? But high class. Compared to the dinner we had the other night, I think I prefer I prefer the shepherd's pie. Yeah, it's a bit too fancy for me. So it looks like a bit of effort involved. Yeah, mm. heaps of effort involved in that. The venison is um, absolutely perfectly cooked. Um, the chocolate cocaine gives it a bit of, <laughs> bit of extra, something extra. <laughs> OK, we'll have all the crumbles out of the oven, please. This is the blackberry gel. 
an arty farty sweep on the plate for some sharers. There's a reason why I'm using a platter, to really show off. Okay, away you go. It's my final course and my last chance to impress the gang. The last of three very delicious courses. Um, frankly, I struggled to, to eat it because the other two were so gorgeous, but um, no, fantastic. Actually, the crumble was actually quite yummy. Yeah, that's probably my best part, the crumble and the, the sherbet mixed together. The sherbet sort of took me back to my childhood. It's a lot of, I eat a lot of sherbet. The crumble has um, got a real zest about it. It's quite tangy. <laughs> well, the crumble was pretty sour and this like hard out pops in your mouth. That was pretty cool. It's, I, love, I love the colours, the different colours that he's used, Simon. Um, I thought it was a, um, a good way to finish a beautiful um, couple of dishes. That's just not enough ice cream. <laughs> well, we got there. Just. Mate, well done. Oh, no worries. Well done. Well done. Well done. Everybody, you're a star. Thanks. You okay? Everybody yeah. okay? We're yeah. still in the tank. Thanks, well Simon. done. Good effort. Awesome job, guys. It's been a massive effort. Three courses from scratch for 40 people. But I'm anxious to find out exactly how it all went down with the guests. Welcome everybody. This is one of the most amazing weeks we've ever had at Bendigo. And it's a, it's a very big privilege to us to have you here, Simon. And uh, this has been very special for us. So how did you guys feel about it? I'd have to be happy with those scores. I had a mixed response to the venison, but my wild rabbit and my crumble have saved the day. Well, I tell you what, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to propose a toast to my southern girls that looked after me here in the kitchen. You're awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> the experience has been really humbling to come here and see what you guys live in. And, you know, here's to central Otago, New Zealand. I've returned to central Otago and I've fallen in love with it again. This place and the people are incredible. John Perrion is a huge contributor to the South Island. He is Bendigo. He's a legend in his own right. And this place is heaven. It is what New Zealand is about. I've loved it. I hope I've given 5% magic to their table. But I tell you what, I'm taking 125% magic away with me of the people, the place, and the soul. See you next week. Next time on Chef on a Mission, I go back to school at Iona College in the Hawke's Bay. There's liquid nitrogen going on in here. I take some classes. You like it? Yeah. Tell me you like it. And I try to feed the girls in style. Who's hungry? Yeah. Check this chicken, please. It's raw. We're a bit worried about them. Just eat chicken. It's all back in the kitchen. Am I relaxed? Not really. <laughs>